All right, this next fly I'm going to tie is a uh, fly called a soft tackle emerger. This is a fly I came up with as an alternative uh, to an RS2 uh, back in the in my guiding days. And uh, what I wanted was something that was similar to an RS2 but wasn't the same kind of thing. Um, since then, I've discovered that this fly probably gets eaten as a drowned spinner, drowned beta spinner, um, as often as it gets eaten for an emerger, but it'll cross over nicely. Um, and this fly is tied on a Tiemco 101, so that's a ring eye hook. Um, I do sometimes tie it on a 100 SPBL, that little bit stouter wire hook, because that's just what I do. Um, I like that heavier wire hook. And I'm going to tie this one with gray A dot unit thread. So I'm going to take and start my thread here. A couple eye lengths back from the hook eye. And I'm just going to wrap a nice smooth thread base about halfway down the bend, and then I'll come forward again. Uh, so not much thread on the hook to start with. Uh, we've got a little trick for the tail. So the tail on this fly, three strands of white floral fiber. What I'll do here is take the short end of this bunch and set it in on the hook and just sort of pinch it in place, and I'm going to catch it with a couple of turns. And those butt ends are short enough. Um, I don't have to cut them off, but you, if they were a little longer, you could come in and trim them out. It's not really a big deal here in this case. And then I'm going to fold these back, the long ends, and wrap back over them. If I just tied that floral fiber in like a conventional tail, um, it pulls out pretty easily because it's such a small diameter fiber. Um, so folding it over like that anchors that in place a little bit more securely than, uh, uh, than if you did it in a conventional manner. Um, so I've got three strands there, and they're a little twisted together right now. That's not a big deal. Um, I'm going to cut them just a, a bit shorter here, just in an effort to get them separated. And I'm going to start to build the abdomen. So the abdomen on this is, uh, you can use super fine dubbing, but I like to use dyed muskrat, like a dark gray, uh, or I'm sorry, dyed beaver dubbing or muskrat dubbing. And I'm going to put a thin little layer of this on my dot thread. That A dot thread is a little coarser thread than I typically tie with, um, so it builds up a little faster. So I'm going to use that bare thread to work back. And when I get my first turn of dubbing ready to come around the hook, I'm going to take that turn and push it under the tail. And you can see how that will lift the tail up. And the next turn right in front, and I'll work forward from there. And I'm going to build a tapered abdomen um, up to within a couple eye lengths of the hook eye, just to where I started my thread. And then I can kind of work back and forth a bit here to finish that taper off. Now once I get here, I'm going to bring my thread all the way up to the hook eye and back again to the front edge of the body. And this is where I'll tie my wing in. And my wing is going to be about 10 or 12 strands of uh, white floral fiber. I'm going to take about 10 or 12 strands of white floral fiber here and I'm going to lay this in on top and catch it with a couple turns and I can pull that top end front end back up on top. So it's laying back over the body. And for the same reason that I did that with the tail, I'm now going to fold this front end backwards and wrap back over it to the front edge of the body. So I just doubled the quantity that we've got in the wing, like so. I'm going to trim that wing just about even with the bend of the hook. So it's just a little bit longer style wing. And for the hackle on this soft hackle emerger, I'm going to pick a uh, a hen feather, and this is from a hen cape, and this is a blue dun colored hen cape, like so. So a hen cape feather, and I'm going to trim the fluff off the bottom, and then trim just a couple little barbs at the base of the feather, so that I've got those little stubs to anchor this down. I'm going to fold this feather like a wet fly style collar, so those little stubs will help to keep this anchored in place as I as I fold. I'm going to tie this feather in along the near side of the hook by those stub ends, and I'm going to anchor it down good and tight there, and move my thread forward, and I've got the inside of the feather toward the hook, toward the body of the fly. I'm going to grab my hackle pliers here, and I'll grab the tip of the feather in my hackle pliers, and what I want to do is stand this feather up. I'm going to hold it in my thread hand, and the side you're looking at right now is the inside of the feather. I'm going to wet my fingers, and I'm going to close them in front of the feather, and I'm going to draw the feather forward through my fingers, and this should show pretty nicely. You can see I'm folding these hackle fibers back to one side. So I kind of stroke them down against the grain, 
That might take a couple of tries. It looks like I'm doing this very gently. I'm actually pulling on those pretty tightly, pin pinching tightly and pulling tightly to crease those back to one side of the stem. Once I'm happy there, I'm going to start to make just a couple turns. It's not going to take much here, but I'm going to sweep these back after each turn. And you can even just slightly spiral these turns to move forward. And then tie that off with a couple of upright turns of thread and come in and trim the stem out. So now to sweep that collar back, I'm going to take my thumb and index finger from the front and push, for, push backwards from the front end of the hook. And then I can hold all that in place. You can see how that is now swept 360 degrees around the hook. And I'm going to take a few turns of thread back over the base of those wraps. You can see that builds a little bit of a cone there. And I'll pinch those fibers down tight so that they sweep back like so. Now to finish the fly off, I'm going to take another little pinch of that same dubbing. Dyed gray beaver or muskrat. And it's not going to take much. We've got a lot of the bulk already built in there with the thread work. But anytime you're going to dub over a taper, you want to start at the front and work back up to the base of the wing. And then forward again and end with bare thread just behind the hook eye. So I'll whip finish this thread. Trim that out. Now the length of the tail, I'll pull that just beyond the, the hook eye. I'm going to go about one and a half hook lengths and trim those out. But all three of those just dangle around. You can see those are pretty sparkly little fibers. They're a little tangled up right now, but get them a little more separated. Now one thing I will usually do on this fly is I'll take a dubbing brush. And this is why I like to tie it with beaver dubbing or, or muskrat, because um, I can shag it out a bit and soften the edges. So I'll just run my wire dubbing brush down the body to pick out just a bit of that dubbing. And it's not, you know, it doesn't make it super buggy, but it does soften those edges, kind of gives it a, a halo effect. And there is our soft tackle merger. This, uh, like I say, is, is most often probably taken as a beta spinner. Beta spinners crawl down in the water rather than... Uh, fall in a conventional spinner fall on top of the water. They crawl down in the water and uh, lay their eggs underwater and their wings are folded flat over their back. Ralph Cutter's got a video, The Underwater World of Bugs, and on the cover of that video is a perfect example of exactly what I'm talking about. There's a picture of a uh, beta spinner underwater with his wings folded, uh, or her wings folded, I should say. And uh, that's what I think this fly gets eaten as a lot of the time. I do tie it in yellow, uh, using yellow thread and yellow dubbing. Um, everything else is still gray and white um, for a PMD. And in that case, I do think it matches up with the emerger a bit better. Um, PMDs emerge differently than betas. They hatch into the adult bug underwater in many cases. So they have the adult shape as they emerge to the surface. Um, kind of an old school wet fly style profile on this fly. Really a pretty simple little fly. It's fun to tie um, and it's really fun to fish. It's something that uh, isn't, uh, isn't something that the fish see all the time, but uh, really an effective pattern. Um, one of my favorites and, and sort of a secret go-to for me. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Take that for what it's worth. See what you think. And uh, if you like it, let me know.